Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Honor the Feminine podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Ledford, and today I'm your guest. I'm your guest here at the end of December to wish you a happy holidays, to share with you the transformative journey that the podcast has created over the last couple of years, to share with you my brilliant allies, and and to just give thanks and gratitude for you joining me on this journey. So the Honor the Feminine podcast started about two years ago. In fact, we're going to have our second anniversary episode on January 31st of 2018. And in that time, I have really stepped into a transformative journey. And the podcast has really been the place where I've seen a lot of that growth and expansion like come to light for me, like come alive for me. <laughs> and so a couple of years ago when I stepped onto this journey, the way in which I honored the feminine and and was stepping into this was around um, healing my journey with other women and through sisterhood and to more fully step into my intuition and my intuitive gifts. And it has been beautiful to watch that unfold. And what's created now is that that's still a way in which I will continue to honor the feminine through the relationships with women in my life, through continuing to more fully um, mine and, and deepen into my intuitive gifts. But my edge at the moment with honoring the feminine is in a different realm. It's really around embracing my shadow and intertwining the divine masculine energy that lives in me with the divine feminine. And so the podcast is going to shift And it's because of the rapid growth and expansion that the transformative journey of the podcast has created for me that I can really see this shift clearly, um, that it's happening and really feel it. Um, and, And that feels amazing. And yet I show up here to say, I'm not sure what it looks like. Like, I don't know exactly what this this next phase and iteration of the podcast looks like because we're stepping to an edge of mine, my edge. And I'm inviting you to come along for the ride because I don't want to stay in the comfort of what I know. It doesn't enliven me. It doesn't push me and challenge me. And that's what I want from this. The podcast has transformed me. It's given me a a place to, to really hold space, to drop in and really honor another, my guest. And that has been really beautiful. And now we're going to do it in a different way. And again, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. Um, So I'm going to take a break in January from now, from mid-December. We usually take that last couple of weeks off of the year. Um, But I'm going to take January off too. And this was a hard decision, actually. It feels really right, but it was hard to make because... Here had been my rhythm. Like I had created a rhythm for the podcast that really worked for me. And then it no longer worked. Or, you know, it felt stale. And so I can't stay in that. I don't want to be in the stale. I don't want to be in the stagnant. I want to be on the edge more so that that growth and expansion and continues to happen. And we're doing it together, right? Like 
I'm marking it by mine, but it's all of ours. It's in the collective. And so, yeah, it's pretty incredible, actually, to, to speak into all of this, right? To speak into, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I'm willing to surrender to that. And that's going to be part of what happens this year because I have chosen my intention for the year as surrender. That's what's come up. And there's this part of me that thinks, man, in 2017, I surrendered so much. And yet I, I know I only scratched the surface. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're about to go deeper. It's about to get more raw. It's about to get more vulnerable. Um, and that feels exciting to me. So my old rhythm would have had me, um, you know, on my vision and calendar for the year, um, I was slotted to do um, interviews in November that would have come out at the beginning of the year. And when I was meant to send out the scheduler in October to put that in motion, I realized that I could not forge ahead, that I couldn't stay with the same rhythm because it felt stale, that it wasn't true anymore for me. And so I had to sit with that a while because I had talked with 12 potential guests. They'd said yes. I'd said yes. I am a big proponent. I'm a deep believer in integrity and in doing what I say I'm going to do as much as I can. But this was one of those moments where my commitment to the potential guests was going to, and moving forward with that, was going to be out of integrity with myself, with where I know it's time to pivot and shift. And so I sat down and wrote what were what felt really hard for me, um, emails around being really open about what's going on, what my truth is in this moment, um, and and letting people know that I'm not going to move forward in the same way, that I really honor their yes and, and thank them so much, but that I didn't know where this was going. And I still don't here in the middle of December exactly where it's going. Um, but I knew it was changing. And I knew that to forge ahead in the same way, in the same format, in that was um, was stifling for me. Like I felt contained and claustrophobic around it, to be honest. And so the best way for me to break out of that was to just be really honest about what was going on. And so I will continue to be really honest about what's going on with um, our community around all of this. Um, I've been sharing a lot of how things are moving and morphing and all of these things um, over in our space on Facebook at Honor the Feminine Daily, which is a place where I share a lot of the changes and transformation. I go live there a lot. Um, yeah, and so that's a place um, to really deepen in with me, with what's going on. And what it's made me realize about myself is that I don't fear change and transition the way I used to. I used to hold on to what had worked just to feel comfortable. And now, while it's not always easy, while there are growing pains and doubts and fears that do come up, for sure, I have a better sense within myself of knowing that I can handle whatever comes up. And like that to me feels like more freedom, right? Because then it doesn't matter. Then I'm not white knuckling onto anything because I can handle whatever's coming my way. 
And that's what surrender will be even more about deepening into this year. And I'm sure you'll be hearing me talk about that on the podcast a good bit because I find when I get intentional and when when that's what's up for me, it's where our conversations tend to start bubbling up uh, with our guests. Um, There will still probably be guests, uh, fewer I believe, but we'll see. We're going to look into all of that. And that really brings me to as we close a year, as we close a year of rapid growth and expansion, um, I felt it really personally, but I also, in those that I that I know, that I work with, we've all felt it in the collective, this really rapid growth and expansion. And in this time of bringing a calendar year to a close, it the moment for me is always twofold. It's about looking back and reflecting in gratitude around the shifts for the past year and also looking forward to the coming year and visioning into that. And so in a time of year where you see a lot of um, gift guides and best uh, things you can't live without this year is, is holiday gift giving, when I looked back to 2017, what I realized was the biggest gifts that came along were the brilliant allies that joined me on my path. And I really burned it down this year. It may not look like that on the surface because I'm still happily married to my husband. I'm still raising a beautiful little human, a four-year-old rainbow unicorn human. (laughs) We still live in our same home in Asheville, North Carolina. But I spiritually and emotionally burned it down this year. I released spiritual teachers. I released mentors. And there was guilt and shame and doubt and deep loneliness that came up around that in letting go of that and communities around that. But what happened was my guides brought me brilliant allies. And what I mean by that is these were men and women who came along on my path this year in the exact right moment at the access point of really rapid growth and expansion. And then were allies with me on that part of the journey. And so many of them I took... um, courses with or did retreats with this year. Um, Some of them just dropped in in a moment where and and dropped so much uh, needed wisdom that it, it shifted things for me. So when I looked back, there were eight that really came to light. And each of them was on the podcast. And so what I've been sharing through this month is highlighting their podcast episode. If you missed it, go back and listen. If you, if you listened, maybe drop back in for more of that wisdom and inspiration. And as that all started to come together, it really became like so abundantly clear what the gifts were. I got this deep gift Like the access point for me this year around authentic self and finding my voice and standing in my power. The allies there were really Amy Tetsumi and Lola Medicine Keeper. And then when I feel into the gift of ancestral healing, that was really brought to me this year by Miyuki Yamamoto and Daniel Four. And when I feel into that edge and access point around sensuality, around deepening into my wild side, that was really brought to me this year by Kimberly Johnson and by Sabrina Lynn. And finally, the gift of the Oracle this year was really brought to me by Alana Fairchild through her Oracle decks, and she's been with me for longer than this year, and Liana Silver 
and Liana dropped in some words around doubt and the creative process at the perfect moment this year. She, she saved me from a lot of um, unnecessary suffering. <laughs> and I thank her deeply, deeply for that. So, yeah. So I am giving thanks to them. And it's not around putting anyone up on a pedestal or, or thinking that, that I couldn't have done it without them. It, it's not that. It's that they activated parts of me in moments and that, that, that really were catalysts for more growth and expansion. That... That's what we're doing with each other now. We're activating parts of each other. And so what I realized was what I'm calling in going forward is brilliant allies, just like this, that are at the access point at my edge. And that that's what I would like to be for the men and women that are coming to work with me is a brilliant ally on your path because we can't do it alone. And actually, that's not true. We can do it alone. But there's um, the, the catalyst and the rapid growth and expansion that um, can be held in a container that, um, that makes it quicker and creates more ease and grace in the integration of it. Yeah, that's what gets held there. Um, Because the wisdom is all within us. It's just being activated by each other. And when there's an intentional container to do that, that's when it can feel really potent. When you have the right access point, the right ally, the right container, there's this... um, Yeah, there's... it's Well, it's, it's magic that happens in a lot of ways, but... It, it just, it opens it up. And so I spent the year feeling more when, when, what the access points were for me this year. The who of the brilliant allies, and they came along in the exact right moments, but I was open to receiving them. Yeah. And as I was writing the... Um, social media posts around each ally, really feeling into my gratitude and appreciation and the way in which they touched my life in 2017, I was hit with how beautiful it is to show our appreciation. And as this was happening, uh, my really good friend, uh, Shauna Redden, over at the Bluest Muse, wrote a blog post. And Shauna's blog post was around showing appreciation. And it was that she'd been at Costco in California. And uh, one of the Costco employees was in the parking lot picking up carts. And he came over to help her load her car and was really sweet and and lovely about it. And um, it touched her. And when she got home, she called Costco to talk to the manager. And so, you know, she gets on the phone and she says, uh, you know, she's like, talk to the manager and the manager gets on and she can feel that energy of the manager bracing for what's going to be a complaint, um, something she's going to have to deal with, if you will, right? And instead, Shauna's called to say, um, we don't do this enough, but I'd like to show my appreciation to Joe, who helped me in the parking lot, right? And, you know, the manager relaxes and, and they have this, you know, lovely interaction. And, uh, and the manager says, yeah, isn't he lovely? And, and you know, he's, he always um, is really helpful. And it was just a reminder that here I am writing these posts of appreciation we are we tend to um, as a society be pretty quick to make that call around the negative right that the customer service was awful or all of these things but we less often 
make that call or recognize when things were amazing, when it really touched us. And so in this holiday season, as we close one year and step into another, my invitation to you is that as you're reflecting and looking back in gratitude, if there was someone who really touched you, send them a note. You can handwrite it. You can make it a text, an email, a private message on Facebook or Instagram, whatever makes sense, whatever makes sense. But it feels really good. It feels really good to have that interaction. And what it also has um, done for me is not only does it feel really good to acknowledge that appreciation and gratitude, but it also has opened me up to receive appreciation and gratitude more fully. So by the giving really openly and easily, I also open myself up to more easily receive. Right? So then the ebb and flow is happening. And that's pretty amazing. And often I find that those that I work with, we are um, we are often not intentional around opening to receive. And, and it seems easy to receive, but we actually don't do it very well. Or I can speak for myself and say, I've had times when I don't do it very well. And so I often now pause when someone's giving me a compliment or appreciation and I take a deep breath and I literally open up my energy system, like open up my heart space and let it in versus um, sort of deflecting it off. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, thank you. And like, let it in. And there's a conscious pause to do that often now. And I just, uh, I often um, just say, oh, I'm just going to, I just want to pause for a second and really let in what you, what you said, because I'm so appreciative for it. So yeah, that's some of what's happening. What, some of what happened this year, some of what's going to happen moving forward. One of the things that came out of the blessing of brilliant allies is that it's, it dawned on me in the shower because so much of so many of my ideas happen in the shower under hot water. Um, that's something to know about me. Um, is a couple of weeks ago, I thought, oh, I know. In this time in January where we're going to be quieter on the podcast, where we're not going to be releasing new episodes, what if I invited my brilliant allies to come do short video interviews with me? Like, what if I can what if I invite them to do short video interviews around their, their shifts and gratitudes for 2017 and what they're most looking forward to in 2018? And I have to tell you, most of them have been recorded now and they are raw and they are vulnerable and they get to the heart of it. And they're an amazing bridge between where the podcast has been, and where she's going. And it has felt incredible. Like, really touched me. So here, these eight people really touched my life all year. And then they're dropping in and, um, like, like, sparking the activation again in these short interviews. So... We are going to be releasing those in January. They'll be released in the Facebook group. So that's Honor the Feminine Daily. So you can go over and join us there. You don't want to miss these. They are, I mean, they're incredible. Um, and, And it was such a beautiful reminder for me to just follow, follow the divine guidance. It was like, I don't know what these are going to bring. I don't even know what they're going to be about. I sent, I sent out invitations before I even know what, knew what we were going to do. I just knew that let's get scheduled and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> 
I used to never be able to do stuff like that. I'd have to have it all figured out so that I felt in control of it. And it, there's so much freedom in not having to know. So much freedom. And I'm so, so, so grateful for that. I can't tell you how freeing that is. How I can dive more fully into my inspiration and the way I'm meant to be of service into the creation and all of it. Because I can leap and know that I can, that it's all going to figure itself out. And that actually in the not knowing and the not manhandling it, I create space for more beauty to be created. I create space for divine to flow in. I just set up the structure. I just set up the schedule. And then the divine energy can come in and create beyond what I could have imagined. That's what this year has been about. That's what surrendering into 2018 is even more about. (sighs) So thank you. Thank you for joining me this year. Thank you for joining for the past couple of years. I look really forward to connecting in 2018. I will be doing the Down and Dirty podcast course that will, um, there's a self-study version, but for the first time we're going to do a live version of the course that will start January 15th. And so you can go over to honorthefeminine.com and feel into that. If uh, if you've been wanting to start a podcast, if you want to get your voice out in that way, I can help you do that in 2018. We can help set your rhythm. We can help find your pace. We can help find the way for you to share of yourself. If podcasting has been something that you've wanted to do but resisted, and now's the time, we can do it together. Yeah. So I am wishing you a really beautiful end to 2017. I look forward again to connecting in 2018. Please join us if you feel called over at Honor the Feminine Daily. It's going to be active and fun and those interviews are going to be, they're amazing. Um, I can't wait to go back and listen because I've only experienced them in the... um, in the original like interview process so far. Yeah. And for those that are joining me at Honor the Feminine Daily, um, there will be a coupon code for the Down and Dirty podcast course that I will be sharing there in the coming week. Um, So yeah. All right, everyone. I wish you a magical holiday season. May it be filled with joy and release any stress that may come up. Um, Yeah. And I look forward to being with you again in 2018. Bye.